Recently I've been fascinated with the properties of signal multiplication, particularly in the analog domain, its uses in frequency mixing in superheterodyne receivers and spectrum analyzers. So I decided to play around with it a bit and see whether I can get some cool waveforms by multiplying all kinds of arbitrary waveforms from a microcontroller's DAC. Looking up analog multiplication yields this analog multiplier IC, the AD633. After ordering five pieces from two separate AliExpress sellers and one eBay seller, the prospect of me owning this IC started to look pretty grim. The AliExpress chips immediately burned out when connected to a power source, and the eBay chip never arrived. So I said fine, I'll do it myself. After researching analog multiplier topologies, I came across this. The Gilbert cell. Upon building it in multisim and simulating, the results looked promising and I decided to build it for real. But the results were slightly underwhelming to say the least. I mean it obviously worked but the optimal supply voltage was off by almost half and the peaks of the output signal were not symmetrical which means the current gain was not the same across all the transistors, even though they are all the same model. Furthermore, they all probably come from the same lot since I desoldered them from the same old TV board. So, this little problem began my month-long journey of designing, building and testing some kind of device which can tell me how well matched certain transistors are to actually be able to determine which properties a transistor has, and therefore whether they are matched across a number of devices, we have to plot its output characteristics, which look like this. The x-axis is the collector emitter voltage, and the y-axis is the collector current. Multiple curves come from different base currents. So, in essence I had to make a circuit which produces a stair-step signal of a certain frequency for the base current, and a sawtooth wave with an integer multiple of that frequency for the collector voltage. The number of steps in the first signal determines how many curves there is going to be in the multiplication factor of the sawtooth frequency. Because every time the base current is changed the entire collector emitter voltage has to be swept. Since generating these specific looking waveforms with complicated variable dead times is a pain with analog circuitry and I have a bunch of microcontrollers just lying around. I decided to go the digital route and simply program their DACs to spit out the desired waveform and then send it through an op-amp buffer in order not to overload the microcontroller. There was a slight problem. I really wanted this thing to be able to analyze both NPN and PNP transistors and since the microcontroller's supply voltage is single rail it cannot output a negative voltage required for syncing PNP base and collector currents so two more op-amps in an inverting configuration had to be used and there would be a switch which switches between the two modes. To display the curves, I decided to use a two-channel oscilloscope in XY mode. This plots X-channel versus Y-channel rather than X and Y versus time. After extensive simulations, it was time to design and etch the PCB, assemble everything, and program the microcontroller. The final results look like this. These are the output characteristics for some generic BC337 I have on hand. The output is exactly what we would expect. Zooming in we can see some funky stuff happening in the saturation region. I still don't know whether this is because my device doesn't work properly in this region or the transistors really are like that. We can also swap out this resistor for a smaller one in order to get a different set of output characteristics with larger base currents. You can also observe the tilt of the output characteristics caused by the early voltage which gives the output impedance a finite value and prevents the transistor from acting like an ideal current source. Let's see how well it performs with PNP transistors. We flip the switch and insert the device. Exactly the same, but as expected the collector current is smaller for the same base current values because of PNP's generally lower gain. Now let's try and see how well matched some transistors are. Here I have two BC337s, and we see that their packaging labels are slightly different which means they come from different manufacturers and are probably not going to be well matched. And as expected they are noticeably different, even though they are supposed to be the exact same device. Now let's try these two 2 and 3904s which come from the same tape. Much better. Last test let's try and increase the temperature. Since these are semiconductors, we expect their conductivity to increase with temperature. Heating up the transistor with a lighter for a second gives an immediate increase in current gain. And as it slowly cools down, 
the characteristics return to their initial room temperature shape. 